The question is, the question is, no, wait a minute. Mmm, Dr. Pepper. No, 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 no. I, got, I got this, I got this. <laughs> All right, here. All right, you gotta make sure the label can show. Okay. So you see? Okay. Dr. Pepper, the taste of originality. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta get the slogan in there. What's the, what's the slogan? Dr. Pepper. Carbonated prune juice. <laughs> All right, here we go. So the question is, does it does the kind of neck joint make a difference in the sound? Absolutely, huge difference. A single cutaway neck joint sounds very different than a double cutaway neck joint. I don't know that a tenon sounds that much different than a dovetail, but how attached the wood is, um, how much glue there is between the wood and the next piece of wood, uh, all the stuff makes a difference. I think the neck joint is a significant contributor to the sound of a guitar. And these guys that are bolting necks on acoustics and the ones that are gluing them in, I think there's a big difference. I think there's a difference all the way around. I think it makes a difference in how you dry the wood. Uh, we tend to spend a lot of time just getting as much water out of that wood as we possibly can. We want it bone dry. I mean, things that wet don't ring as well. They shrink over time, they warp, they, you know, the wood has not settled in. Um, the question is, if you spend, you know, 20 years drying it, is it going to sound better if you spend, you know, two months drying it? Yes and no. Uh, I do know that when, when I grew up in my attic, all the two-by-fours in my attic had all this resin squirting out of them from getting extraordinarily hot every summer every and very cold every winter and i think that process really works you know air conditioning just showed up right so all these old violins gotta air condition the violin well that wasn't going on for a long time it was bone dry in the winter and humid in the summer and i think that the instruments actually got better from that process so i think drying the wood out very very well makes a difference. I don't know enough about the cellular change if you air dry something over 30 years than if you, you know, use a humidity kiln or you use a, a, a hot kiln or, or we use our hot rooms. I, I don't know enough about the cell structure differences in the, the uh, I've never done the research for the ring time. I do know that we spend a lot of time getting the water out. So. Just stay in this hot room for like weeks. No, it's just, just look. Days? It depends, William. If we get it pretty dry and we get it in a hot room and it's pretty dry, we're okay. We start using it. But Martin spends years and years and years drying this stuff out, and it's still too wet. And we spend a much less time. It's like a sponge on a sink. You know, in the summertime, the sponge stays wet and stays soft all the time. In the wintertime, it gets hard as a nail. You ever notice that? Do you ever notice that when the your sponge gets uh? really hard in the winter time. Do you ever notice that? That's because the relative humidity of the house is so much lower in the, in the, um, in the winter. So. There's several glues that work. Obviously the old hide glues that made the violins works. Um, they used to use something called fish glue in the old days for gluing frets in. We use uh, epoxies for gluing fretboards on. Uh, we use um, Elmer's, Elmer's uh, Carpenter's glue for some of the stuff we use. I don't know. Uh, look, what's the deal? You want the wood to be held, held together really well. You don't want the glue to stop the vibration. You want it to help it. And you don't want to have take, taken all this time to get the water out and then put it back in. So, what do you do? Uh, for when we glue our fretboards on, we use a, a special kind of epoxy because we spent all this time getting the water out of the fingerboard and the neck will not want to put it back in. And rosewoods typically don't want to be held onto by glues, but this stuff holds really well. When we glue a neck in, we use a, a water glue, you know. Um, the violin makers use hide glue. I, it, I think... I don't see that big a difference in the kind of glues that you use. I see a much bigger difference in the design and the 
the kind of woods that you use and how thick the woods are and how resonant they are and you know how tight the holes are that you put the bridges in with and that I mean there's a lot of things that make a lot of difference but if I glued the whole thing together with high glue would it sound about the same probably absolutely you stick a clamp on a bell it's gonna change the tone isn't it I mean a truss rod works like a clamp you know so I think it's really important the whole truss rod thing we are very careful to put the truss rods in without any plastic tube around them um, our whole truss rod rotates in the neck uh, if the theory is that the truss rod makes a big difference in the sound of the guitar, absolutely. And I've always maintained that and I've always thought it. Absolutely. The question is whether or not you build the instrument under stress or it's under stress when it's glued together, it makes a difference in the sound. Absolutely it does. To get into the details of it, I think the guitar makers watching this DVD need to do some experimenting. I don't really want to explain it all. And I, I, and I, well, look, first of all, I don't understand it all, but I have theories about it. We are picking around at the secrets. I, you know, all your questions are, are trying to, okay, just tell everybody. All right, go on, do it. What, what, I mean, that's what you're doing. You're but, making it a secret. William, this is how we make our living. This is how. Oh, now hang on a minute. Let's know, talk. Let's talk about this a minute. It, it's okay to be completely open, okay? But at some point, if you open your bank account, it will get drawn off of. All right. So, it, 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 we have certain things we keep to ourselves, and and he's asking questions that are what are the what what's the difference the finish makes? Does polyester really make that much difference? The acrylic urethane what's make that much code? difference, huh? What's your pin code? <laughs> what's my pin code? Right. What's my pin code? There, there it is, right there. What's the pin code? Right. Now, here's the credit card. What's the pin code? Absolutely, the finish makes a difference, and what kind of finish, and how thick it is, and all that stuff. Believe me, they, they, they don't. When they put a finish on a car, they're trying to shut it up. They are trying to shut down the sound inside that car, so they spray this very soft under, underbody paint on it to shut it up. Well, the opposite of that is, you know, trying to make it a noisy car. You know, in a guitar, we're trying to make it noisy, right? So it makes a difference. I really don't want to get into the details of all that, but there are some kinds of finish that sound better than others, some kinds that sound different. I don't think anybody necessarily believes that the old stuff is the best stuff. Um... I think that it's not really soft is important, and it's not really thick is important. And I, with that, let's just leave it there. Mm -hmm.